All right, so I'm going to use that over here. Again, this dot is just a symbol that I invented. You won't see it in the textbook, but I think it's useful. This tells us that the magnitude of G is 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, let me discuss a bad habit that a lot of people have. Um, how do a lot of people read this symbol? A lot of people read this just as gravity. A lot of people say, oh, gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, that's a very common and really a very bad habit. When you see the symbol G, you should not pronounce that as gravity. Um, it's not gravity, it's the acceleration due to gravity. Um, and in other contexts, you might talk about the force due to gravity. Um, so later in your course, you'll be talking about the force due to gravity. Right now, we're talking about the acceleration due to gravity. It's kind of meaningless just to say gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. Do you mean the acceleration or the force? So try to get out of the habit of um, pronouncing this symbol as gravity. Um, what, what's the correct way to pronounce this? The correct way is that this is the acceleration due to gravity. This is the acceleration due to gravity, or even more correct, I've just been saying this is really the magnitude of the acceleration due to gravity. Maybe that's a little bit um, too picky. This is the magnitude of the acceleration due to gravity, or if you're going to be a little less picky, you could just say it's the acceleration due to gravity. But you shouldn't just say that it's gravity. That's kind of meaningless. Um, maybe the best thing to do is just say that it's G. Um, uh, that's the shortest and easiest thing to say. We can just say that G equals 9.8 meters per second squared. But you, you shouldn't say that gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. That's meaningless and can lead to confusion. Incidentally, uh, if you're preparing for a standardized test like the MCAT, um, especially one where you can't use a calculator, usually on a standardized test, you would approximate G as 10. We can usually safely approximate g as 10 meters per second squared if we're doing a standardized test where we can't use a calculator. Um, so I thought that was worth mentioning, but I'm not going to do that in these videos. In these videos, I'm going to be doing problems where I'm assuming that you are using a calculator. So we're going to use um, the more accurate value of 9.8. So in these videos, we'll use the more accurate value of 9.8, and I'm going to assume that you're using a calculator to do these examples. Uh, I've just mentioned that I think sometimes people can get a little confused by the symbol G. Uh, for one thing, they forget that when their textbooks say G, they, uh, the textbook just is referring to the magnitude of uh, gravity, um, not the sign value. Um, and actually, uh, in this series of videos, I'm really just going to be focusing um, at this point on how to solve numerical problems, not algebraic problems. So I don't really think I'm going to really use the symbol G from now on. Uh, instead of using G, I'm just going to use 9.8 meters per second squared. I think that's a little less confusing and more straightforward. So we're not going to be saying that the acceleration is G. We're just going to be saying that it's 9.8 meters per second squared in the downward direction. Let's consider a ball that is thrown upwards, vertically. Remember, we're not thinking about horizontal motion here, so we're considering a ball that is thrown straight up. Um, let's try to draw the path of a ball that's uh, thrown straight up. Why don't you try drawing the path of a ball that is uh, thrown straight up? Try to draw that path using the same techniques that we used in the earlier series of videos on general one-dimensional motion, and, and try to label that path as carefully as you can. So try to pause the video and draw the path of a ball that's thrown vertically up. Well, if we think about it, we can see that the path really has two different components. Uh, originally, the ball is going to be moving upwards, and then eventually it's going to start moving downwards. That's just common sense. Uh, whatever goes up must come down. If you throw a ball vertically up, then you know it's going to rise for a while, it's going to reach a peak, and then eventually it's going to start coming back down. Uh, so here's the ball rising. Uh, and then over here, we could draw the downward path. So here's the upward path, and here's the downward path. Uh, now remember that, of course, actually the downward path would be covering the same exact space as the upward path. 
So it's really going to look like this. The ball moves up, and then it moves down along the same path. The only reason that I'm drawing the downward path off here to the right is so that I can see it clearly and it won't get confused with the upward path. So I'm drawing the downward path in a separate place than the upward path, but again, in real life, the downward path is covering the same space as the upward path. We're going up along this path and then down along the same path. I'm just drawing the downward path over here so we can see the two paths more clearly. Uh, let's think about the object at this point. Let's try drawing the velocity and acceleration vectors for this point. Remember that after every question or problem that I pose, I'm hoping that you'll pause the video and try writing down an answer. Try writing down the velocity and acceleration for this point. Well, we're moving up, and remember it's the velocity which tells you which way you're moving. This is the upward path, so the velocity here should be pointing up. So here we have the velocity pointing up for this point, because we're moving it. And what way is the acceleration pointing? Well, remember, it doesn't have to be up. The acceleration does not tell you which way you're moving. Just because we're moving up does not mean the acceleration is up. Remember that the acceleration is coming from the force of gravity, and gravity is always pulling us down. We've already discussed that the acceleration due to gravity is always down. So the acceleration at this point is going to be down. So here's our acceleration at that point, pointing down. Um, we're moving up, so the velocity is up, but the acceleration is down. Remember from the previous series of videos um, that the acceleration does not have to point in the direction that you're moving. That's the velocity's job. What does it mean that the velocity and the acceleration are anti-parallel here? What does it mean that they're not pointing in the same direction? Well, again, you should know from the previous series of videos, this means that the object is slowing down. When the velocity and the acceleration are anti-parallel, the object is slowing down. Well, we just knew that from common sense, right? Anyway, if you throw an object up, um, it immediately starts slowing down. Gravity slows it down um, the further it's traveled upwards. So it's not surprising that this object is slowing down. Try drawing the velocity and acceleration vectors for this point. I hope you paused the video and gave that a shot. Um, so uh, let's go first to the acceleration vector. Well, we know the acceleration is always down, and we know the acceleration is constant at 9.8 meters per second squared. The force of gravity is constant on the object, so the acceleration is going to be constant. So not only am I going to draw this vector pointing down, um, but if I was a good drawer, I would be able to draw this arrow about the same length as this arrow. I guess that's about right. All right. Anyway, I'm trying to draw this arrow about the same length as this arrow. Uh, because the acceleration is not only just still pointing down, but it's pointing down with the same magnitude as before. This length represents 9.8 meters per second squared, and this length also represents 9.8 meters per second squared. So try to draw these two arrows as the same length. Now, what direction should this velocity be pointing? Well, clearly we're still moving up. So the velocity should still be pointing up because the velocity tells you which way you're moving. Um, but how fast are we moving here? Are we moving faster or slower than before? Well, we just said that we're slowing down. We're slowing down, so this velocity vector should be shorter than this vector over here. So I'm drawing that this arrow is clearly shorter than this one. I'm not going to try to figure out whether it's... Uh, one-third is short, or half is short, or one-tenth is short, whatever. I'm not trying to draw these to scale too much. All I want to show is that qualitatively, um, at this point, the object is moving slower than at this point. Well, we know that your speed is indicated by the magnitude, the length of the arrow. Uh, hopefully that's something that you've covered in your course or seen in your textbook. So these are what we call vector arrows. Um, well, both of these arrows are pointing up, because the object is moving up in both cases, but here the object is moving slower than down here. Again, maybe it's not moving this much slower. Uh, I'm not trying to get the arrows to be the precise right length mathematically. The point I want to make is just that this arrow should be shorter than this arrow down here. Um, because we know that gravity is slowing you down. Um, as you're moving upwards, gravity is pulling down on you and slowing you down. 
you can see how easy it is for people to get confused between velocity and acceleration. The acceleration on here is pointing down in both cases and it's the same length because it's that constant 9.8 meters per second squared. But the velocity represents your, um, your speed. Well, we're slowing down, so this velocity arrow should be shorter than this one down here. Um, how did we know we were slowing down? Well, for one thing, the acceleration is anti-parallel to the velocity. Remember that when the acceleration is anti-parallel to the velocity, that means that you're going to be slowing down, and that means that the velocity arrow is going to have to get shorter. 